The ter third type of factoring that we've done in class is factoring when you have either perfect squares or perfect cubes. We've so far done the GCF, the greatest common factor, which is like the taking out of something. We've done FOIL factoring, well, both the more simplistic when it's just x squared and whenever it's a, a number in front of the x squared. And now we're into the third type. And what's special about perfect squares and perfect cubes, it does help to be able to recognize when you want to try to apply it, is it has to be a binomial. The formulas for perfect squares and the formula for perfect cubes will always be made up of two terms. I'm going to start with the perfect squares and the other thing that's special about perfect squares is for perfect squares it is always subtraction. We actually call it the difference of perfect squares for a reason. The idea difference means subtracting. We cannot factor something that is perfect squares being added. There is no factorable form of that. So you always see two terms with a minus sign between them. The other thing that is special is all your numbers will be perfect squares. Perfect squares like 4, 9, 16, 25, and so on. Factoring them is very easy. It is always made up of two binomials. One will always be positive. One will always be negative. To get x, we just x squared is just x times x. And then we just take the square root of the number. So to get 64, it has to be something times itself. It is 8 times 8. The reason that this works, the reason that there isn't that middle term like there is with FOIL factoring, is because the outer and the inner cancel. So when you think about FOILing, when you have this difference of perfect squares, the O and the I are always opposites. They cancel, which is why when you look at your original problem, you're just left with the F and the L. Next one, same thing, slightly more difficult because you have a coefficient in front of x squared. You have one positive and one negative. In order to get a 4x squared, it's going to be 2x times 2x. In order to get a 25, it's going to be 5 times 5. And again, if you do a quick check, make sure your inner is 10x, your outer is negative 10x, which will cancel, leaving you no middle term. The third one is a little more challenging because right off the bat what you'll notice is we don't have perfect squares. 2 is not a perfect square. The power isn't a perfect square. It's a cube instead. So this is an example where you need to do a takeout of the greatest common factor first. So if I look at the two terms, what they have in common is they're both divisible by 2 and they both have an x. So we're pulling out that GCF. Then we're going to write down what's left. So if I took out a 2x, I'm left with an x squared. And if I took a 2 out of 72, I'm going to divide. 72 divided by 2, I get 36. And there's no x there because I already took it out. Now what you'll notice is the piece that's in parentheses, that is a difference of perfect squares. It's subtraction and everything's squared. So I keep the 2x, don't want that to disappear. And now I do my difference of perfect squares. I'm going to have a plus and a minus. It's going to be an x and an x. And then to get 36, it has to be 6 times 6. So another example of a perfect square is however one they have an extra step in the beginning before you're able to do the difference of perfect squares. The other perfect type formulas we call perfect cube formulas. And I am going to have these jotted down the board looking at um, how to work with this. So I'm not really worried as much about memorizing it as much as I am just utilizing it, being able to understand what this formula says. Now, what's special about perfect cubes, it's also two terms. It doesn't matter if they are added or subtracted. We have a formula for both. So it's not like the squares where it has to be subtraction or you can't do anything. We can work with perfect cubes that are added. We have a formula for that. It's the top one. We can work with perfect cubes that are subtracted. We have a formula for that. It's the bottom one. What you want to do is you want to identify what are the a and b, what values were being cubed. So I like to come off to the side and just jot down my a and my b. My a is going to be what was cubed to get an x cubed. That will be x. My b is going to be what is cubed to get 27. So if you can't remember how to do this, there is a cube root button on your calculator. It's in the math menu, and it actually has a little radical with a little 3 on it. So if you can't figure out the cube root of 27, you can use that. Or you can test things and say, well, is it 2 times 2 times 2? Is it 3 times 3 times 3? In the end, you get that it is 3. So that is our a and our b. At this point, I am just going up and using this formula, just putting the x everywhere you see an a and the 3 everywhere you see a b. So my factoring is x plus 3. And then in the second parentheses, it is x squared, because I'm squaring whatever a is, minus these two multiplied together. So x times 3 is just 3x plus 3 squared, which is 9. 
Now, the nice thing about the perfect cube formula, even though it is a little longer, when you get to this step, it is always done. Perfect cubes will never factor any further than what you just wrote down on the piece of paper, what you just saw me write down. That second trinomial, this trinomial that some people say, well, can't I go further? It will never factor further. It is always a non-factorable piece after you did that step. The next one, same idea. I'm going to write down what my a is and what my b is. So a, in order to get an 8, it had to be 2 cubed. And in order to get the x cubed, we need an x. So a is 2x. b, if you're not sure what the cube root of 125 is, again, you could test some things, or you can use your calculator. It ends up being 5. The only difference with this one compared to the one before is now, since it's subtraction, we're going to use this formula. And really, all it does is it changes some of the signs. So in the first parentheses, instead of a plus b, it's going to be a minus b, so 2x minus 5. In the next parentheses, we're going to take 2x and square it. Make sure you square the 2 and the x. You get 4x squared. Plus, now we're going to take these two and multiply them together. 2x times 5 is 10x. Plus, we're going to take this number and square it. 5 squared is 25. And again, even though you look at that trinomial and think, can I FOIL factor? Can I go further? It will never go further. It is always done as soon as you apply the perfect cube formula. So that takes you through that next special type of factoring, helping you with the ones that start off with two terms, being the perfect squares, if it's subtraction, or the perfect cubes.